Okay then gang, so now we know how to set up route handlers in the web file, including how to use route wildcard for dynamic sections of a route. We've also seen how to pass data into views using this second argument, which is an array of key value pairs. So now I want to talk a little bit more about views themselves, and in particular, how we can use something called blade directives in views to implement additional logic within them. Now, there's a ton of different blade directives that do a whole variety of things for us, and we're just going to touch on a few of them in this lesson. But we'll also see a few more as we progress through the rest of the series. Right then, so what is a blade directive? Well, in simple terms, a blade directive is a way to add logic within views, and they can do things like conditionally render content for us, or loop through data to output content for an array of data, or only show parts of a template if a use is authenticated, etc. So they can really add a lot of value and flexibility to your views. Now, the way we create a directive is by first of all using the at symbol followed by the directive name. So for example, I could say at if followed by a set of parentheses to evaluate a condition. And then within this if statement, I could nest a little bit of HTML code, like a paragraph tag that says hi from inside the if statement. We'd also normally indent this HTML code just to make it more readable. And then below that, we'd also need to end the if block by using the closing if directive, which is just end if. So now inside the parentheses, we'd need to pass a value or an expression to be evaluated. And if it evaluates to be true, then this content gets rendered. If it's false, then it doesn't get rendered. So we could just add the condition here, which is dollar sign greeting is equal to hello. And we know that's true because we passed that greeting value into the view ourselves before and we set the value to be hello. And now in the browser, we can see that paragraph tag because the condition was true. So this paragraph tag gets rendered to the page. Now inside the web routes file, I'm going to change this to a different value like hi. So now this should be false, right? Because it doesn't equal hello. And therefore this shouldn't get rendered. And now in the browser, we no longer see that paragraph tag. Awesome. Okay, so that's the if directive that lets us check a condition and conditionally render a little bit of content based on that condition. Another useful directive is the for each one, which lets us loop through a collection of data and output a little bit of content for each value in that collection. Now, in our case, that would be helpful when it comes to the list of ninjas we currently pass into this view, because at the moment we're manually creating an li tag for each value in that ninjas array to output the name and the ID inside the anchor tag as well for each one. Now, this approach isn't really sustainable because there could be hundreds of ninjas in the future when we're fetching them from the database. So instead, we can use the for each directive to loop through the ninjas array and output an li tag for each one. So first up, let's delete the current li tags right here. And then let's make this loop inside the UL by saying at for each, which is the directive name, and then parentheses. Then inside parentheses, we're going to say dollar sign ninjas, which is the array we have access to, then as ninja. So we refer to each individual item in this array as ninja inside this loop. Then below this, just before the closing UL tag, we'll end the loop by saying at and then end for each. So now the template code we nest inside this loop here is going to be generated and rendered for each ninja in the array. And remember, if we go back to the route file, you're going to see the ninjas array that we pass into the view has two ninjas inside it. So now let's create a little bit of template for each one. First up, we're going to create an li tag and inside the li tag, we're going to make a paragraph tag for the ninja name. Now we have access to the ninja from the current iteration via the ninja variable. So we can just use double curly braces and then say dollar sign ninja and we grab the name field from that ninja. All right, so next up below the paragraph tag, we can add an anchor tag and the text for this can just be something like view details. And for the href attribute, we need to point to the route we created for individual ninjas, and that is forward slash ninjas, forward slash, and then we want to output the ID of the ninja. So again, we use those curly braces, and we can grab the ID field from the ninja for the current iteration. And now that's pretty much it. So 
We're using the for each blade directive to effectively create a for each loop within the view and we're looping through the ninja's array. Then for each iteration, we get access to the individual ninja and we output a bit of template for that ninja using the ninja value. So let's take a look at this in a browser. Before we do that, I need to correct this. I don't know why I put ninja here. It should be ID. So we want the ID field from the ninja, not the ninja field, which doesn't exist. All right, so now we can see in the browser that we have a bit of HTML template for each ninja in the array. Awesome. So like I said, there's a whole bunch of different blade directives available to us, and they all follow the same pattern of starting with the at symbol. And most of the time, they're going to have a closing statement too, but not always. So you can view the entire list of directives on the Laravel docs right here. So if you're ever wondering whether there's a directive for something, you can always check this out. And also we'll probably be touching on a few more directives ourselves as we go forward in the course. All right then, so next up, we're gonna talk about layouts in Laravel.